So there was a moment right after uh, my son's bar mitzvah where everything just became very, um, the tension just like rose because he's like, okay, now your bar mitzvah, your, the expectations are real now, you know, you're a man. So, and there was, I just saw a lot of pain and there was a lot of, a lot more, um, you know, raising the voice and a lot of tension in the, in the home and like yelling and screaming and expecting. And, the, and when you, when you want to, um, want your kids to behave a certain way and that, that control comes in, the kids, instead of doing what you want and cooperating, they go the other way, the same way as our husbands. Right. And I knew that when it came to kids, but I had no idea about that, about our husband. So I would go into control of controlling my husband. Like, you know, let's take a class together. Let's take a parenting workshop and you need to listen to this and you need to listen to this mentor. And, but he was just, it was just getting worse and worse and worse because he was feeling, um, he, he was just feeling that I was, he would tell me, stop interrupting me. He would, he would constantly tell me everything I say, you're always interrupting. Just let me finish what I, what I want to say. And I would be interrupting because I'm like, the next thing that's going to come out of his mouth is going to hurt my kids. So I would always like kind of come in between them. Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your husband's conscious effort so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about five signs your husband has a crush on another woman and five questions to ask. My guest Irina's marriage was good, but she felt disconnected and it always bothered her. But then things got a lot better when she made a discovery and she ran with it. Today, her marriage is connected, intimate, and authentic. She's going to tell us how she did it so you can do it too. But first, here are five signs that your husband has a crush on another woman, which can make you feel terrible and unspecial. After all, he committed to loving you and only you till death do us part. And now you notice that he's using an excited voice with the neighbor or going way out of his way to help her, texting with someone a lot more than usual, staying at work with a female colleague, staring at another woman. And that's scary. After all, crushes can grow into something more. And it seems so wrong that he could feel that way, like, like a betrayal. Even if nothing has happened, it's not how you want him to feel about someone else. Those five signs that he has a crush on another woman can make you feel bad when you focus on them or, or find even more evidence that he's crushing on someone else. But instead of focusing on that, what you really want to know is how you can make him stop crushing on someone else and adore you instead, right? Well, here are five questions to ask when you're afraid your husband seems enamored of someone else and you want to feel irresistible yourself. Number one, ask yourself how happy you are. On a one to 10, how happy are you right now? If you're less than a 10, what can you do today to top yourself off? and lift your score. Because if you're unhappy, you're making it hard for your husband to succeed at making you happy, which he loves to do. You'll never be more attractive than when you are smiling, laughing, singing, and dancing with joy. Number two, can he be your hero? Your husband has a hero gene and it gets triggered whenever you express a pure desire, as in, I would love fresh flowers, or I would love to go to Paris, or I would love to sleep in. Without expectation, just reflecting on what your heart is telling you, that can make you fascinating to him. So what is it you desire? How about making a list so you can connect with that incredible power of having your desires be the North Star of your relationship? Number three, do you appreciate him? When did you last thank him for making the coffee or working hard to support the family or being a good dad to your kids or for taking you on vacation, out to dinner or on a walk around the block? It may not seem necessary to thank him for little things, but it is fun to remind you both that you're the princess he's taking care of and to let him know that he's doing a good job. That is so attractive. Number four. 
do you ever apologize? Another surprisingly attractive quality, like crazy magnetic, is accountability. If you said something rude or disrespectful, even if it was a while ago, apologizing will make you so adorable. And it probably wasn't that long ago, if you're anything like me. I'm better than I used to be, but as a mere mortal woman, I still get snippy sometimes, or I just want to be efficient. And I say something that's not what I would have said when we first started dating, let's say. But when I admit it and I apologize, I'm like a supermodel that he's been married to for 35 years. Number five, do you expect the best from him? Respect is another irresistible quality. So ask yourself, are you expecting the best from him? Because that means seeing how responsible he is instead of worrying that he'll be late for work and lose his job or admiring how handy he is instead of telling him he should hire a professional to build the deck or appreciating how loyal he is instead of criticizing him for having a crush on someone else. While that may seem counterintuitive when you're feeling scared or disappointed about the way he's interacting with someone else, you might be surprised just how much power you have to be the center of his attention and affection by just being your best self. I have exciting news for you because right now you can listen to my book, The Empowered Wife, for free with your Audible membership in the United States. So discover the six surprising secrets to attract your man's time, his attention, his affection when you listen to The Empowered Wife audiobook on Audible without using credits. You don't need any credits. It's free. The Empowered Wife has over 1,700 five-star reviews and it also has some one-star reviews too, because not everybody is ready to hear what they can do to fix their relationship without their man even knowing about it. And I get it. I wasn't ready either until my marriage was completely falling apart and we were on the brink of divorce. And then I learned from women with happy marriages what actually works. And now my marriage is shiny and amazing. And those secrets are in this book. And you can listen to the whole book for free with your Audible membership. The only catch is that this Audible deal is only for a limited time. So to make your marriage last and thrive, go and listen for free with your Audible membership right now. My guest Irina's marriage was good, but she felt disconnected and it always bothered her. But then things got a lot better when she made a discovery and ran with it. Today, her marriage is connected, intimate, and authentic. She's going to tell us how she did it so you can do it too. Irina, welcome to the Empowered Wife podcast. I'm so happy Hello. you're here. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, so happy to be here. Great. Well, tell us about the battle days. What was going wrong in your relationship? Um, so I'm married over 20 years and about at the 18 year mark, um, we kind of started feeling um, really, really low, really that, that this connection kind of came in because we were kind of, you know, uh, we got married really young, really early. And, uh, we had kids really young, you know, in our early twenties and, you know, you kind of get into a routine, you, you get busy and he would work, you know, long hours. He would only be home once a week. And I was busy with the kids and you go through the motions, you know, things kind of like, you know, people, we had a, we had a good relationship because when we started dating, our relationship was built on friendship. Like we really liked each other. We enjoyed spending time together. But then as we got married, you know, things kind of became like routine and um, he was at work and I was with the kids and I was at, in school at the same time. So that was kind of, you know, our life. And, um, it was okay until the kids kind of started becoming teenagers. That's when um, things kind of started going a little bit south because, you know, my husband was kind of okay. He, so he's religious and he had this, you know, movie in his head that, oh, when my kids are going to be this certain age, they're going to, he had like these expectations of what, you know, our children are going to be like, and they didn't live up to his expectations. And he was really upset about that. So there was a lot of, um, anger and resentment and resentment towards me that I didn't do, uh, you know, the, a good job raising them and mm. like to oh, the way sure. that, yeah, 
yeah, really a lot of ouch. Yeah. Like, like uh, your so most important a, job, you didn't do a good job, basically. Right. So things yeah. were like pretty okay until that point. And then there was a lot of, you know, yelling and screaming and um, just just feeling really unsafe. And me, who I, who I am, I would come, come in, always come in in between. Like I'm mama bear. I got to protect my kids from their big bad dad. You know that. And uh, I was always in between. I was always choosing my kids because I had a really um, traumatic childhood. And I was like, I cannot let my, even though, you know, he was being their dad, the, it wasn't like that level of, but I was like, at no cost can my kids feel any pain. I must protect my kids from pain at all times. And I was always coming in in between them. It's always my kids are my number one priority. You know, I, I had, I didn't have the clarity of what I was doing. And that I, I didn't know that I was being controlling. No, no, you just, you just wanted the best for your kids. I mean, I think this is part of being a mom, this instinct to protect them at all costs and, um, and, and really seeing him as being too harsh. It sounds like. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. You just wanted the best for your kids. That's what I right. hear. And I wanted to have a family different than the type of family that I grew up in. I wanted to have peace and calm and, you know, loving. And I wanted my kids to grow up in a, in a home with two parents who love and care for each other. And just, you know, that's the movie that I had in my head. And I, I, I took, I'm a teacher. So, you know, I have the, the teacher background. And also um, I took a lot of cl- parenting classes. My number one priority was to be the best parent, the best mom I could be because I didn't get that. And I wanted to give that to my kids. So, you know, I was very educated on how to be an amazing parent, how to see my kids and how to offer them all all their needs met. But I wasn't taking any classes on how to be a supportive wife, which is now I know that me being a respectful and dignified wife would really be like the best mom that I could be for my kids. Oh, wow. This is quite a transformation. I'm here it already because uh, especially, so I could see though, as a teacher and someone who's taken a lot of parenting classes, uh, you probably really felt that you knew best oh, and, yeah. and you're the mom, you're the mom. Right? That's I went to college. Me. I have a master's degree. I know everything. <laughs> Right. And, you know, you're just a business owner. Like, what do you, what, I yeah. know everything. I, you know, I can fix that. That was definitely where I was at. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Totally makes sense. I'm, I'm the expert on everything and you know nothing. Right. So right. That. And he, and he wasn't listening to you. It sounds like. He, he really wanted to, he really wanted to, he really, he, he, he really tried to. But I guess over time, I was just really, I would roll my eyes, at, like whatever he would say to the kids, I would roll my eyes. I'll be like, oh, dad doesn't know any better. And even maybe I didn't say it in those words, but that's, that's how I felt. Like he doesn't know what he's talking about. Listen to me. And um, yeah, that's that basically where we were. That, that space where we were. Yeah. Which is, um, it, and when you're in it, I just know for me, feeling like I, knew everything and he didn't know anything it, you don't know how painful it is but it is uh, kind of lonely i think uh yeah it sounds like you were feeling very lonely about that as well very lonely and also feeling like i'm a martyr and you know i'm doing all this hard work and i'm doing everything on my own and, and i i didn't feel like i had a partnership like i need to do everything on my own I felt like I had to hold the whole family together. I took everything upon myself. I'm like, you go to work and I got everything else. I would take care of the bills. I would take care of the everything. Like you could think of it, of it. I would take care of everything. And when he would offer help, I did not know how to receive. I would say, just go to work and I got it. And I was feeling so tired and, and overextended and so resentful and so alone. Yeah. So I... I imagine it was impossible to not be resentful of him and angry that he wasn't contributing more and helping you carry the whole family. Right. Right. Yeah. But that, that was the, the story in my head. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. But the pain was real, right? Like pain in, in the time, because the story to me at that the time was real. That's all that I was able to see. That was my narrative. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, you sound very self-aware now, and I, I can just hear so much accountability in the way you tell the story even. But um, was there a moment when you thought, okay, we, we can't go on like this? So there was a moment right after uh, my son's bar mitzvah where everything just became very, um, the tension just like rose because he's like, okay, now your bar mitzvah, your, the expectations are real now, you know, you're a man. So, and there was, I just saw a lot of pain and there was a lot of, a lot more, um, you know, raising the voice and a lot of tension in the, in the home and like yelling and screaming and expecting. And, the, and when you, when you want to, um, want your kids to behave a certain way and that, that control comes in the kids, instead of doing what you want and cooperating, they go the other way, the same way as our husbands. Right. And I knew that when it came to kids, but I had no idea. <laughs> about that about husband so I would go into control of controlling my husband like you know let's take a class together let's take a parenting workshop and you need to listen to this and you need to listen to this mentor and but he was just it was just getting worse and worse and worse because he was feeling um he he was just feeling that I was he would tell me stop interrupting me he would he would constantly tell me everything I say you're always interrupting just let me finish what I, what I want to say and I would be interrupting because I'm like, the next thing that's going to come out of his mouth is going to hurt my kids. So I would always like kind of come in between them. And so, um, did, so you were trying to get him to take a class and stuff about the parenting, not so much about the marriage, it sounds like. And he would go, he would go. But okay. It wouldn't, it wouldn't change. He would go just to, to please me because he just got tired of me telling him that he's doing the wrong thing. And I would always also say, like how you say in the book, like we need to talk, which means that let me tell you how wrong you are. When I, when I read that, I was like, oh, <laughs> you're busted. I was exactly. And I was taught that a good marriage, you have good communication. Yeah. Good, yeah. good communication means you're talking to each other. Yes. You, you know, we need to talk. We need to communicate. But our communication was, I'm right and you're wrong and you to get, you need to get on my um, way of doing things. You need to get on my bandwagon. Yeah. So was there ever a point where you just thought maybe we'd be better off separate or? But he actually, he as, as hard as it was, as lonely as I was, he actually came to me and he said, I'm not happy. You're not happy. The kids are not happy. He's like, it's not working for us. And I said to him, and I was shocked. I was like, we're married for 18 years. And I, I, ju I just felt so guilty. And I just started seeing myself as like just the shame of, wow, I couldn't even get it to 20 years. Like I tried so hard. I did everything in my power. And I literally held our whole family on my shoulders. And this is what I get. And awesome. Um, awesome. yeah, it was, it was very painful. And I said, if that's what you want, no problem. You know, it's not what I want. I didn't know. I didn't know what to say. I just felt lost. But, you know, on the outside, if, if anybody would find out that this is the conversations we were having, they would be shocked because on the outside, we were the most loving. And I and it broke my heart because I, I know that he loves me and I love him. But we just have different views on how we want to to do life. And this is what's breaking us apart. Like he was becoming more religious and I was becoming more spiritual, which was, we were doing the same things, but we were kind of like disconnected from each other. And, you know, I wasn't respecting him. I wasn't seeing him and I wasn't seeing that he was lost and he was connect, trying to um, find a way to, to, to get us all back to that space. And I was doing the same thing. We were just doing it separately instead of doing it together and it was just so heartbreaking that um he wanted like we both loved each other but he's like i just can't do this anymore it's just too painful gosh it sounds awful it sounds um exhausting also you must have been really tired with all you were doing and yeah. having i remember talking to a friend of mine and just saying i'm just exhausted um, whatever he like whatever he wants that's what i'll do yeah. But you guys didn't break up or did you? Did you separate? No. So 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 then what I said was I I don't want to get divorced. I want to I, I want to be married to you. I just and I think that we can figure this out. And then he said, "Okay, whatever you want. I'll do whatever you want." He thought about it. 
and he said i'll do he's a really good guy like he's, he's a, a good really, guy that's just what I was really, really like really you good have guy. a good husband he's a mensch <laughs> so i love that so um so what did happen then so we went to counseling. I didn't, you know, wh what do you do when your marriage is about to, you know. Everybody knows. Got to go to marriage counseling. From right. a marriage counselor, you go to a mentor in the community. Um, so we did go to a marriage counselor and um, he, we, you know, I would complain about him and he's doing this and da, 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 and everything's on me and there's no help from him. I would just sit there and complain about him. And he... He just kind of, he didn't complain back. He just took it. And like now, like looking back on those, I just feel so bad. That was so mean. And it was, it wasn't helpful. But the, what the marriage counselor said after I, he would just sit there and just quietly just listen and take it all in. And he would just say like, I want my kids to do this. Now he it wasn't talking about me. He would be talking about the kid. And he's like, I feel like my kid don't, you know, respect me or I, I feel like he would talk about his feelings about what's going on with the kids but I would sit there and complain about him so it was like the kids are kind of in the middle and I'm attacking him and he's kind of like attacking the kids that's how I felt from my perspective yeah so it felt like it wasn't getting anywhere no and but the therapist one thing that the therapist said that was really helpful was I see you guys and I hear your stories but I just don't know how to be on the same page and that like shifted something for me, like maybe hearing it because I know that, but hearing it from someone else, like shifted something for, for me, like, wow, he sees that, that like, we really do care about each other. We're just stuck in this communication. That. Like a couple fulfilling prophecy for the two of you. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. I'm so yeah. happy, happy to hear that. But it took a couple of therapists to get to this therapist. <laughs> oh, okay. It wasn't like, it wasn't a one and done type of deal. You know, I had another therapist who told me to, um, you know, I'm not doing enough and, oh, you know, yeah, I'm not doing enough. Um, yeah, I'm not doing enough. Maybe I should try this and maybe I should, I should try, you know, all these different things, just making me feel like more heavier. But when I read your book, your book was about accountability and responsibility, but it didn't feel heavy to me. It just felt like, yeah, like. I can make myself happy. I don't need to wait for him to make me happy. And maybe I'm I'm going a little bit too 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 far, but yeah, it just felt so different. Well, what did it how did you how did you get to the book or what happened in between there? So um I did a lot of um just spiritual introspection, just trying to figure when he said that, when the therapist said that we both, my me and my husband. And I started thinking that um, I spoke to someone who told me that I need, it needs to come from me. Like my if my kid's happiness ha comes from me, that I uh, that if I want to fix my kids, I gotta fix me, because she kind of gave me the representation like I am the earth, and my husband is the seed, and the kids are like the tree. So if the earth is not healthy and doesn't have its nutrients and everything, like the the whole dynamic of the family falls apart. And that really resonated with me. And then I started doing, you know, taking care of myself and doing things, you know, um, just how do I say it in a way that everybody could relate to it? Um, I, I started healing myself. I started healing my wounds. I started um, just really giving myself what I needed. And I, and then I saw a difference in my kids. Like they, they be started becoming happier. They started to connect to me better. My relationship with my husband started improving. He started um, attracting, like I didn't take him to, um, I, to classes, but he started, he has a long commute to work and like different podcasts and different mentors. He, people would send them like links to listen to different things that were like really aligned to what I was doing. It was just interesting how the universe kind of started like, wow. yeah. like giving him what he needed without me dragging him into it. Like, you know, and we both started doing work on, on, on ourselves and it's things started changing and kind of like we started more or less um, coming on the same page. And I started taking a lot of workshops and learning about the feminine and the masculine. And one of the workshops was, oh, they mentioned vulnerability, but they said, you need to sit 
and stare in each other's eyes for 10 minutes and be really vulnerable. Thank you. <laughs> and I was just like, that, that's I not did just really... roll my eyes, didn't I? I didn't mean to, but it that's sounds okay. Awful. But I, okay. I, yeah. Right. So it just, it didn't feel like, that's why when I read your book, like I knew about the feminine and the masculine and all these things. When I found your book, Laura, it was like, it's so practical and it's like real life vulnerability. It's like when I do something to say, um, I apologize. That's like real life. That's not me forcing him to sit and stare into my eyes for 10 minutes. How ridiculous is that? <laughs> I know. I can just imagine like telling my husband, okay, we have to stare at each other's eyes for 10 minutes, right? Yeah. Anyway. Like oh. which guy is going to go for that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, yeah. They might do it like, like your husband and my husband too, just to make us happy. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's not, it's so that real. wasn't really working for you, it sounds like. <laughs> no, so, but I really wanted to know. And I, like someone told me that the reason why you're feeling this way is because you're in your masculine, like you're just doing it all and you're not, you're, you're, and, and he's in his feminine because there has to be that polarity. And, uh, and I'm like, how do I get, so I knew I had the information, but I didn't have the how. That's what I love about your book so much is that it's so practical. And it's like, you give me the words to say to just like, okay, wow, I could relax. I could just say whatever you think. And then he, he, re he responded to it so well, you know, there was, the bait was like very minimal. I mean, it was there and I learned how to handle that, which is also like part of rel rel relinquishing control where sometimes there would be bait. Sure. And, you know, um, I, I know enough to like, in order to respond, just stop, pause, take a breath and then respond from that, from that space. Mm -hmm. Like, don't just like the first thing that comes to your mind, which is like, you know, my, my patterns. And I, I know better. I, I stop, I take a breath and then I respond. Okay. That sounds like the opposite of what you were describing earlier, where you, he kept saying, you keep interrupting me. You won't let me finish my sentence because you were afraid it was going to hurt the kids. So I still do that, but not as much. Not as much, but yeah. I mean, this kind of sounds like a superpower in a way to be able to stop and take a breath and not respond, even though it feels kind of urgent, like you're feeling like it's bait to do an old, the old dance that you guys used to do. All right. So you, um, so you were on this, you were on a spiritual quest and your husband was too. And then you, uh, and you were reading books and and one of them was the empowered wife it sounds like so let me tell you how i how i found the empowered wife so we were doing much better you know things were better with the kids and i remember driving and just like you know i i kind of just uh, some people pray from a prayer book i just talk to god that's like my thing i was driving and i and i just like I want to connect to my husband. I just want to connect to God, universe. Just how do I do that? I don't, how do I do that? I want to connect. I want to have a connected, beautiful relationship with him. I deserve that. And I, that's what I want. Um, in the next few days, I was invited to a bridal shower of, of a niece who doesn't even live here. She lives in, in Florida. Happened to be that, um, her her aunt lives here and she decided to surprise her with a bridal shower and she threw her bridal shower here in new york and um and usually when i have when i work i don't go anywhere if it's like a work day but something just pulled me to go there to be there they needed something that i had and i i brought it with me um and at the bridal shower you know people are giving her as they do they give um, marriage advice which is you know communication and all of that good stuff <laughs> <laughs> um but someone um her one of her aunts said girl you just need to get the empowered wife just get the empowered wife it has everything you need to live the life the to build uh, the marriage that you want to like whatever you feel for your husband now if you want to feel it for the rest of your life just read the empowered wife and I've heard about the empowered wife here and there, but I didn't hear about it, about it spoken with such, um, just such such love and such because she's like it changed my life with my marriage, and she's been married over twenty years also, and she just like my my entire marriage changed, and it was so inspiring. And I said I must read this empowered wife after that after that 
that uh, bridal shower. So I have a long commute to work and I didn't have time to read it, but I down, I um, listened on Audible and I, I love that, that you narrated. It sounded like a podcast. So I love that even more. And I was just, everything that I learned about spirituality and the feminine and the masculine and, and just the values that I align with, everything was just like, yes, 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 yes. You know, like the self-care, the what do you want? The receiving, the vulnerability and all of that. And But it seemed so like real and human and something that I could do and apply to my life on a daily basis. Like it's real life skills, you know, like I'm a teacher. We have all these different things that we teach kids, but I'm like, you have to start with life skills. Like, let's let's start with like, how do they, you know, how do they go through emotions and how can they cope with frustration? That's like a life skill, right? Yeah. But that's that's what I got. From, like it, it was just in aligned to every single value that I had. There's nothing like that I disagreed with. <laughs> wow, wow, I love that. It really it sounds like it really spoke to you, and was um, coming right on top of all the preparation you'd done as the Earth of your family to kind of nourish your soil. And um, so what? So what did it? So then what happened? Like, what did you, did you start doing things differently than you had been doing? Right away. So when I heard, when I heard you speaking about respect and when I, you know, that chapter that you have about, um, you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. They kind of do things in their own way. And you kind of coming in there, you're taking away from, from, from your kids building a relationship with their, with their, with their dad. Like that really spoke to me how the dad pushes the the boy and the moms are like, Oh my gosh, like, how could you do that? That's so mean. But, and, but the boy is like having fun with it. And I, I relinquish that control. And I, I kind of like when my husband kind of like, um, speaks to my kids in a, in a way that I'm like, but that's, that's so mean. I'm, just, I, I, you know, I, I step away and I, I let them have their conversation. I, 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 I duct tape. I stop interrupting. Um, was that hard to do? Yeah, at first, but, but I was seeing their relationship become so much closer and and like flourishing that it was so rewarding that it, it's it, it's worth it. What's like I'm you? gonna I'm gonna feel pain either way. Either I'm gonna feel pain right now in this moment, not pain, but discomfort, like duct taping, or I'm gonna feel discomfort where my whole family is in tension. Which pain do I rather feel? Yeah, you put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I totally get it, but. So that took some courage, Irina. That took a lot of courage to stay quiet when he was being too harsh, he thought. Yeah. But sure. it was worth it. It was it's so worth it. And I just see and the way that my son always like sticks up for his dad, it, meaning like if I if you'll say a certain joke and like I'll look a certain way, my son's like, Mom, it's okay. Like, you know, like he has to give me that, like it's cool, like it's not it's not hurting my feelings. And it has never hurt his feelings because he's their dad. He loves them and he knows what's good for them. And they're in each other's life for a reason. You know, there's growth between them. And when I was coming in, I was stealing that from them. I wasn't doing them any favors. This is so humble and so accountable the way you're describing this. So that's amazing. I mean, it sounds like your son and your husband have a wonderful relationship. I do they do now yeah that's so cool that's so great so and as a mom this was more rewarding than the other way a thousand percent and it's so much lighter and i i just feel so much more relaxed like um if i'm in the kitchen he's like in the living room he'll be on his phone or whatever and the other day I was like in the kitchen, I just put on some music and I just started dancing and like just you know he came in for a second I kind of took him in I started dancing with him and all of a sudden, he, he sat down. He's like, do you need me to peel some potatoes for you? <laughs> I'm like, what? What is this coming from? <laughs> and I knew because I read it in your book. I'm like, this, now the magic is happening right now. All, <laughs> and all I have to do is just be happy. That's all that it takes. You were already enjoying yourself dancing in the kitchen, right? Right. I love it. And then he just wanted to, he wanted to pile on. You know, it, it felt so good. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's great. So it's, it sounds like it was pretty exciting to know that you had all this power. Oh my gosh, 100%. I'm not waiting for him to make me happy anymore. I'm not waiting, you know, for him to change or for 
um, him to see me or because when I'm happy and when I see myself, when I stand in my power, that, that just comes naturally. Like I don't have to wait for it. Yeah. Beautiful. So uh, what else? Was there anything else you started doing differently? This is, I mean, you've shared quite a few things already, but uh, I just want anybody who's listening and having issues with her husband and their children to hear everything that you did to get where you are now. So was it, it, can you think of any other things you did? So so my husband stopped buying me flowers um, and, you know, he would say, I'll buy you other things, but I just don't believe in flowers. You know, you put them in a vase and then they end up in the garbage. So like, what's, what's the use? What's the point? And one time he got me flowers from our garden. He made a a bouquet and he brought me flowers and I totally rejected him. I was like, if you want to give me flowers, you're going to buy me a nice bouquet. I deserve a nice bouquet of flowers from the store. And if he would buy me flowers from like, you know, a, a supermarket or something, I would totally like reject it. And because I didn't know. Enough. I didn't know. I was like, I deserve. Enough. And the way that I get what I want is I tell him that I deserve better and you better give me exactly what I want or else. <laughs> so but in a charming yeah. way, you would. Right? So charming. <laughs> like you really want to give to that person. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You want to give them even more, right? right? After they say stuff like that. Yeah. I relate to you, Irina. I remember doing the same kind of thing. So so then you stopped getting flowers altogether, it sounds like. So I stopped getting flowers altogether. And then I'm not really sure what I did or what I said, but a couple of weeks ago, he brought me flowers from Costco. And they were the most beautiful flowers. And I had no idea that they were from Costco. So I was like, it doesn't matter. Just receive. I ran up to him. I gave him. I'm like, oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you. They're so be. And I meant it. I meant it. You know. I just like. I wanted to just let him know. Just you. You're bringing me something. Even if he would have brought it from the garden, I was in that space. I knew better. And I was in that space of I'm going to receive it graciously. Oh, so yeah. I came up to him. I hugged him. I said, I love you. Thank you. I love the flowers. They're so. The whole uh, weekend, I was, um, you know, just. You know, telling him how beautiful the flowers are, how much I love them. And uh, and then he goes, my oh, my son said, oh, we, we got it from Costco. And um, I felt that twinge inside of me a little bit, like they're from Costco. But at the same time, then I thought about it. I'm like, what's the difference? Like, I was so happy when, before I knew that they were from Costco and they were like, whatever they were, 20 bucks or whatever they cost. Why does the amount that it costs Make me make me feel that I'm worthy or that I'm not worthy. What's the difference? He he went and he bought me these flowers. He brought them home and he gave it to me. And you know, just and just say thank you. Like that's the story that kind of went through my head. You know, just just receive receive it graciously, no matter what it is. Wow, it sounds like you and you let him cherish you. You let you felt cherished by the flowers, regardless of where they came from or how much they cost. And you and that connection, like I give you all the credit for creating that connection because you received so graciously. Um, it sounds like it, it felt really good to do that. Yeah, it definitely did. Feel, feel. Wow. So um, and what about your kids? Like, how do you think these changes you've made have affected your children? Well, first of all, my daughter, she's 20 years old now, and I feel like I wouldn't lecture her on how to show up as a woman and as a wife, but I hope that she just like subtly just sees my relationship with her dad now. And I'm sure that she's, you know, taking in and learning and in whatever way I can impart that on her. Like that's, that's what makes me feel good that I'm not, I'm not giving over um, those negative ways that I kind of grew up with. And like, I keep, you know, keeping that over as we do generation through generation, I'm kind of breaking the cycle and learning to do things a different way and hopefully giving her that, I think, for my boys also to see, you know, what it's like to live in a dynamic of like a couple that's intimately married. I feel like that's, that's, a, that, that's the, of all the parenting classes that I did, I feel like this is the best parenting thing that I could ever do for them is just being a happy mom and a happy wife and fulfilling myself. Wow. Well, great job with doing that. 
um, it sounds like you have come such a long way and it's made a big impact on, on your kids. What is your marriage like now? How would you describe it? My marriage like now is, so things are so much easier. I feel much more connected. Um, if he offers help, I, I receive graciously. You know, I create that space for him. I'm not perfect. You know, I'm a work in progress. Sure. Yeah. But me now too. that I have the awareness, right. Now that I have the, I wasn't the uh, ridiculously happy wife. And I listened to your recent uh, call recently where you spoke about receiving. And that just resonated so much for me because I feel like it's a huge area of uh, growth for me. And, uh, and I love how you say that I'm just a mortal woman. So like, I'm not perfect. Yeah, definitely not. Because for no. me, it was like, you know, I expected myself to be this perfect mom and this perfect, like, you know, woman who does everything and shows up for everybody. And, but I didn't honor myself. I was, you know, I was pleasing everybody else except for myself. Yeah. And so now it, it sounds like you're doing a lot more pleasing yourself. Oh yeah. I, I, I have, my kids already know Wednesday night, mom is going out dancing. Like that's, I have, I take a dance class. They already know. I and then I come, back, I come home happy. So they they don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. And this is, and this results in you dancing in the kitchen and stuff too. It sounds like so. Yeah. So dancing's big self care for you. It is. Yeah. I love yeah. It. Yeah. That's so cool. So, um, so what would you say to somebody who is, kind of stuck where you where you were like maybe you know it's feeling very disconnected you didn't want a divorce but um but it seemed kind of hopeless that it was ever going to get better and she wants what you have now where he's bringing her flowers and coming over to just be by her because she's an irresistible magnet and offering to peel the potatoes and you know making sure she can go to dance class on wednesday nights it sounds like he's supporting that and um and she wants what you have. What's your best tip for her? To focus on herself, self-care number one. What do you want? That was so powerful for me. Like just like like I read in your book, like we suppress it since we're little girls because it's it's so painful. Like a lot of times you ask a woman, what do you want? That's, I don't know. They know all the stuff that they don't want. But we have no idea <laughs> what we want. Yeah, it's so true. So it sounds like you are pretty good at knowing what you want now. Yeah, I love it. I I wrote my list of desires, Laura, and I have to tell you, it's been three months since I discovered you and I, I checked off so many things already and it just feels so good. Just just sitting down and writing my desires feels amazing. Like that's just in that, you know, that that's self-care for me, just sitting down and just writing what I want. I agree. I love that feeling too. Just getting in touch with all of them. It's exciting. And does your husband know what happened or just, is this, have you kept it a secret from him? I don't keep it a secret. I have to tell you something that I have a friend, her name is Shoshana and she loves the empowered wife. When I shared with her that I love the book, cause you know, we talk about these things and she's like, Irina, let's just learn the book together. And I said, what do you mean? She's like, let's just make a WhatsApp group, whoever wants to, and we'll just learn. So now when, once a week, a bunch of us girls on Zoom, and the people love you, this work so much and this book so much. We just get together and we have this group of, and, and there's accountability between us. And we have the language, the empowered wife language, and it just feels so amazing. So once a week we get together and we learn the six intimacy skills and we share our wins and... um yeah, and I, and I told them about um, the ridiculously happy wife, and some of them are joining. So it's just it's it's amazing. It's an amazing. Uh, so your husband knows all about it. Sounds like he knows all about it, but he doesn't know the details. Like he doesn't know the phrases and the little you know things that I that I use. But I love it. I love I love telling him whatever you think, and I trust you. Like I I see a change in him when I say those words. Cause I didn't have that. I really, I did not trust them. I thought that I had to do everything and everything had to be on my shoulders. And the only way for me to create the life that I want is for me to work harder and to do more. Oof. But um, yeah, that wasn't but, true. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But I, I, I bought that lie and I sold it. To 
myself, you know, and I, I lived by it and I was exhausted. Wow. How cool that you were so open and so willing to experiment with some new ways of doing things. And now, you know, you get this life instead, which I love. What What do you think you would say if you could go back in time and talk to Irina and tell her what you know now? What would you say? I would say be open, know what you want and ask for what you want. You ask and you get. <laughs> <laughs> So cool. It sounds like that's exactly what happened. You've created this family life. That's the one you always dreamed you would have. It sounds like not perfect, but it sounds like it's a lot more connected and warm at your house. Thousand percent. Wow. Good job. Irina, I want to present you with my best wife award. See, best wife right here, because you did it. You took a, a situation that felt um, exhausting and hopeless and hard and was making everyone miserable in your family. And now everyone's life is better. Why? Because you had the courage and the humility and the accountability to look at yourself and do some things differently to make yourself happy. And that has um, been the foundation for your whole family for that tree to really flourish. So congratulations. I received graciously. We thank you. <laughs> well done. Well done. This has been inspiring to hear your amazing story. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing it. Thank you, Laura. It's an honor. According to a study at Harvard, and this was horrifying to hear, if you know a couple who's getting divorced, you are 75% more likely to get divorced too. Woo. It matters who you listen to, which is why over 7,000 women like you who think that having a great marriage is important have joined our free Adored Wife group. The Adored Wife Group is a launch pad where you can meet our certified coaches and discover the best next steps for making your marriage last and thrive. It's 100% free to join. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash group right now. This is a private group and it's not for everybody, but if you are a wife or girlfriend who thinks that having a great marriage is important too, we'd all really like to meet you. So go to lauradoyle.org slash group right now to join us free. That's lauradoyle.org slash group. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. On next week's podcast, I'm going to share four ways to make your husband happy. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that when someone says drink responsibly, what I hear is don't spill it on the brand new rug. <laughs>